welcome, honors biology students. This is a review of unit three, yes? yes? This is all things energy. We did energy and enzymes, and then we focused on, I forget which order we went. Did we do photosynthesis and then cellular, no, we did cellular respiration, then we did photosynthesis. So it's all things energy. All right, so hopefully you're in if you wanna be in. If not, write it down so you can kind of get in there, okay? So on your unit three review, big ticket. Thank you, Nikki. I appreciate it. On chapter six, here are the big ticket items, the laws of thermodynamics, how they relate to entropy and energy. What is ATP and its role? Exergonic, endergonic reactions, catabolic, anabolic, how enzymes work, and the difference between oxidize and reduce. So just look over those and like, how do you feel about it? Okay. Um, let's run through a few of these together. Okay, I'm going to put myself over here, make myself maybe a little bit bigger. Can you still see what all the ones are? On the, on the pear deck, you can, right? Okay, am I in the center? Okay, so let's just see if we can just go through all of those and just hit them really fast, okay? So the first one is, what are the laws of thermodynamics? Thank you, sweetheart. Try one more time to submit and then just close everything out. Um, laws of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be what? Created or destroyed. It just changes forms. What law is that? First law, okay? Because looking at your test, some of you just confused first and second on your laws, okay? That's the first law. The second law says every time it... Changes forms, you lose some as heat. Perfect. And entropy says, I want to make sure you guys you guys give me the feed of what I need to do. Entropy says everything's going to greater and greater what? Disorganization, right? So the reason why we eat and breathe is to fight that disorganization. So when we relate that, if you have a lot of potential energy, potential, like what has more potential energy, glucose or carbon dioxide and water? Glucose has more potential energy. So would that be high or low entropy? Low entropy, right? When you have a lot of potential, your disorganization is low, right? Is it stable? No, right? Because to be that well organized, it could be easily disrupted is how you can think about it. Whereas CO2 and water is more stable, not a lot of potential energy, but your entropy is high. Okay. Do you feel good about that? Okay, then the next part is it, do I need to talk about ATP or something? What is ATP? ATP is adenosine triphosphate, which has three phosphate groups. And it's that energy in that last phosphate bond, right, where there is the most energy. Okay, and then it's types of reactions, yes? Exergonic, exer, what do you hear in that? So energy is leaving. So your reactants have the? higher energy and the products have the Lower. right because exergonic you released that energy out right whereas endergonic just so you know you'll be recorded if you say anything okay gone okay endergonic reactions um endergonic reactions you're putting energy what yeah. into it right and so your products have more energy than your reactants yeah. what do you call it when we okay we tend to change some things and i okay you got it i got it i got it okay um one second okay what do you call it when i use the energy from an exergonic reaction to do an endergonic reaction what do i call that coupled reaction right okay and then what else tell me what the next thing is i need to talk about um, uh, what, what is it? I'm sorry. Oh, catabolic and anabolic. We can do that. Catabolic is when you release energy and anabolic, you're putting energy in, right? Okay, good. I just wanted to go over those because I know, I know that I look like a street person right now. Okay. I, I, okay, there we go. I knew you would know those big ticket items off the bat. So entropy is the amount of disorganization. You're always going to know that. We talked about glucose, highly organized, low entropy, lots of potential. Um, and then this one we saw in both cellular respiration and photosynthesis. When you have, in, when you have hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane, that has a lot of potential because they want to go to the, what? other side. And when they do, they can go through a carrier that is, yeah, what is the name of that thing? 
ATP synthase complex, right? And you can make ATP using that carrier that is also enzymatic, whether you're doing photosynthesis or cellular respiration. Okay, um, we talked about this already. Catabolic reactions release energy. You can couple that with anabolic reactions. We already compared exergonic and indragonic. Now, indragonic, you have to put energy into it because the product has more free energy than the reactant, right? Exergonic reactions, do you need to put energy in those? Yes, you do. You know this. What's that energy of activation? activation. Remember that? That little hurdle to prevent those exergonic reactions from occurring. And remember that little hurdle is just so it kind of keeps it all together and the balls all don't roll, roll downhill. You don't fall apart in your, you know, your seat. So what do enzymes do to that hurdle? They lower that hurdle. And they do it very specifically for very specific reactions, remember? So even though this reaction is considered a spontaneous reaction because it's exergonic and it can release energy, it's just like you could have firewood in your fireplace that has a lot of potential energy. Breaking it down to ash and heat, you could release a lot of energy, but you need a match to get your fire started, right? We're very familiar with that in this community, right? Okay, next, um, enzymes facilitate that. What do you need to remember about enzymes? They have a very two binding sites that are really important. One is where the substrate binds. What do you call that? Active site. And it's very specific to the substrate. In fact, substrates are oftentimes named after, I mean, the enzymes are named after their substrates, yeah? Okay. And if you change the active site, you're going to influence whether or not the substrate can bind. Yes? Okay. There's another site that's super important on enzymes. What's that called? Allosteric site. Who can bind there? Non-competitive inhibitors. But they end up changing ultimately through a series of events, right? They end up changing the what site? Active site. What do you call inhibitors that bind directly to the active site? Competitive inhibitors, right? So competitive inhibitors are competing with the substrate for that active site. Non-competitive inhibitors are binding to a secondary site, which ultimately changes the active site, okay? All right, um, next, maybe baby. Okay, please. Okay, and this is just showing you without the enzyme, your hurdle is higher. With your enzyme, the kinetic energy itself is enough to make that reaction go forward. And what kind of things can affect the product? And we did that with our enzyme lab, right? If you increase the chunk, the size of liver that you put in there with, the, remember the liver was, was carrying the catalase to make hydrogen peroxide go to oxygen and water. So if you increase the chunk of liver, then you got even more bubbles, right? Because you had even more enzyme. Do you agree with that? Same thing could happen if you had more substrate. If you kept adding in hydrogen peroxide, you're going to increase the amount of bubbles you have because you have more substrate to change into oxygen and water. Okay. Other things like temperature and pH can also impact enzyme activity. And that's because enzymes are primarily proteins and they have a very specific shape. So if you heat them up or cool them down, they won't be in the right shape. Their active site won't be right. Um, a difference in pH can also change that shape. Um, and that's why you did your lab with, you know, whether you used vinegar or used baking soda or water. Okay. So we talked about this right here is a competitive inhibitor when it binds to the active site. A non-competitive inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, a secondary site, which then ultimately affects the active site. Okay. Questions about enzymes or energy that you want to talk about? Okay, so let's move on and we'll do the songs together to help us remember. I just will paint the overview first. When we look at cellular respiration, and this is true for photosynthesis as well, you should be able to write out the equation and identify what gets reduced and what gets oxidized. And in some of your group tests, and when you did this part, some of you had arrows going both directions, but I was either asking you about cellular respiration or I was asking you about photosynthesis. So I couldn't tell if you actually knew because you were doing it for both reactions. Okay, so make sure. If you're doing cellular respiration, what do we start with in cellular respiration? Glucose. Glucose. And what else do we ultimately need when we do cellular respiration? 
oxygen, right? And the glucose is going to get oxidized into what? What does the glucose become? <sighs> Carbon dioxide, right? And the oxygen is going to be reduced into what? Water. Okay. And you're also going to make as a product ATP, right? A bunch of ATP. Do the other one and then I'll come back to you, okay? Photosynthesis is the reverse of that. In photosynthesis, the plants are taking CO2 from the air and they're reducing it into what? Glucose, right? They fix it in the dark reaction, light independent reaction, Calvin cycle, right? They fix it into glucose and they use water. What do they do with water? They break it in half and they produce what? Oxygen. And to make this, because photosynthesis is an endergonic reaction, you have to use energy from the sun. So the energy is on the pro, on the reactant site, whereas when we do cellular respiration, the energy is on the product. Okay, question. So for the, for cellular respiration, did you write ATP on like the first side for reactant to second? No, I would not, because overall, remember you net out two ATP. Yeah, so you just do the net. I'm going to just tell you, sweetheart. So I showed you that you have to invest that, but you get four out. So that's why we say net two ATP. Okay. Right. Because one went one direction and one went the other way. Yeah. So 36 to 38 ATP is a product of cellular respiration, but you use energy as a reactant for photosynthesis. Okay. So then um, we did, we talked about this, talked about this. Um, I'll address photorespiration in just a minute. Let's look at the big ticket items, okay? For cellular respiration, the first step, who does the first step? And where do they do it? Yeah, and we'll do the whole song, but they do glycolysis. Then what your second step is depends on whether or not you have what? Oxygen, okay? If you have no oxygen, your second step has to be what? fermentation. And the sole reason you're going to do fermentation, which isn't on this particular diagram, is you have to oxidize the NAD you reduced in glycolysis. Remember we said reduce some NAD and make some ATP too, right? You have to reduce NAD before you can make ATP for glycolysis. So if all you have a finite amount of NAD, so if all of it is in the reduced state, then you won't be able to do glycolysis anymore. So you got to oxidize it. And remember, we say either way, you what? Oxidize your NAD. So some organisms like you and I will take our pyruvic acid and we convert it to lactic acid, which makes our muscles. But other organisms, when they're doing anaerobic respiration, plants, yeast, they'll convert it to alcohol. Yeah. But in both of these reactions, they're oxidizing NAD so they can make ATP again during glycolysis. Okay. If you do have oxygen, though, you won't go down the fermentation route. What is step two if you do have oxygen? Transition prep. And you're going to move on into the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, right? So you're going to take your pyruvic acid and you're going to convert them to what? To acetyl-CoA, right? And when you do that, you're pulling off a what? Carbon dioxide. So that's why we went and you what? Reduce some NAD, okay? So now, I've got NAD from glycolysis. Not a lot, I got two. I got NAD from transition prep. Not a lot, I got two, okay? But now I'm getting ready for the Krebs cycle. And how many times am I gonna do the Krebs cycle wheel? Twice. And every single time, I'm gonna make three NAD. So since I'm gonna crank it twice for one glucose, I'll get a total of how many? Six. So that is what gets me a bunch of NADs, is that Krebs cycle. So I take those six, the two from transition prep, my two from glycolysis, and that's what's going to help me make ATP, okay? I also make another player in the Krebs cycle. Who do I make? FAD. He's not as powerful because he only gets me how many ATP? Two, whereas NAD will get me three, yeah. So that's when I'm done with the Krebs cycle, when it says oxidative phosphorylation, that's my na 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 na. And remember how we said gather all our reduced NADs and FADs and take them to the top of the. That's when they get oxidized. Like what we do in fermentation, where we oxidize the NAD. That's if we have oxidize oxygen, we will drop off the electrons. They get oxidized. 
The electrons move through their electron transport chain at three places, reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase, cranks hydrogen ions out to the inner membrane space. When they come back in, we can make some, a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, or a lot of it, a lot of it, okay? Now, this is just showing you the anatomy of where everything takes place, glycolysis, pyruvate, if you're gonna make lactate, you're still out in the cytoplasm, transition, prep to acetyl-CoA, Krebs cycle. Um, oh, you make some ATP in the Krebs cycle, right? But not a lot, how much? Just one per turn. Remember we call that substrate level phosphorylation. We just like, yeah, okay. And then uh, we will make um, some ATP, okay? This is just detail of the Krebs cycle, which you have. Remember every time in our song where we say do the bit, we are reducing an NAD and pulling off a CO2 when we sing. Here in our electron transport chain, na 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 na, reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase, then you make some ATP, a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, when those hydrogen ions come back in. Okay, if we have no oxygen, this is when we do fermentation. We still do glycolysis, which reduces our NAD and makes us a total of two ATP, net, net, netting out two, no oxygen. So we go down one of these two pathways, but either way, you oxidize your NAD, so you have it available for you again, okay? That is the cellular respiration chapter. A questions about that? Yes? Um, so do you know in the, the fermentation, like, when you take the, the CNAT, you put in that one, and then when you take off the CO2, where does the, like, O come from? Remember, I don't show you all of the hydrogen and oxygens here. I'm just saying three carbons, but it's there. I just don't have you learn it. The, having oxygens attached is different than having oxygen O2, free oxygen to act as a receptor at the bottom of the chain. It's got an oxygen attached onto it, right? Like, so if I said, hey, there's carbon dioxide in the air, just breathe that. You can't because you need free oxygen in order to make that work. Okay. All right. Now, transitioning into chapter eight photosynthesis we want to look at the anatomy of the leaf and then we can look at the stomata the little openings where that gases get in and out and sometimes through that stomata you can lose too much water right and when you do that the stomata will close if they're losing water right because they're like you know we need this water so they close and when they do that they run the risk because they're still doing photosynthesis what gas gets consumed by photosynthesis? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. What gas gets produced? So all of a sudden, you're cranking away doing photosynthesis, but your doors are closed. So you're consuming all your CO2, generating a whole bunch of oxygen, and RUVP gets tempted by the fruit of another, and she wants to start hooking up with who? Instead of carbon dioxide. And what's that called when she does that? Photorespiration. So there were two adaptations for that. One is to hide away your dark reactions and use a compound called PEP to escort it in. Remember around the veins, those bundle sheath cells, I'll show you that picture. And the other one were things like cactus and things like cam plants or even pineapple. They fix all their CO2 at night, which means they store it. They get it from a gas to a solid. They store a whole bunch of it up, hooked up with PEP. And then that, because they know during the daytime, we've got to close our doors. We live in the desert. We're going to lose too much water. They can have their doors closed because they have stored all the CO2 and they can give it back to the plant. So that, that way they avoid photorespiration because it's neither photosynthesis nor respiration. It's just bad. Okay. And that all has to do with these stomata doors closing. Um, when you look at a cross section of a chloroplast, you have membranes again, kind of stacked up. This time you concentrate the hydrogen ions inside those thylakoid membranes. What's the name of the thing? Instead of reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase, what do you call the thing that brings it in? PQ. Concentrates to the inside, so when it goes back out, that's when you make some ATP. Now, you're not cranking out ATP like you do in cellular respiration to, like, survive off. You're cranking out ATP so you can build what? What are we trying to build? Glucose. Glucose. We're trying to build sugar. Okay, so we will use that ATP, and we don't do one electron transport chain, we do what? Two, right? One electron transport chain will get us ATP, the other electron transport chain will get us reduced NADP. And we need both of those to build our sugar. 
So light's pretty critical in this whole process. Um, oh, here's an, an, another picture of all of that. You will have that if you want to refer to it. Um, light's important. What captures the light energy so we can use it to make chemical energy? What in the plants does that? Pigments, right? And we said pigments absorb different wavelengths of light. And when we look at most of the plants out there, what wavelength of light are they not absorbing? Green, right? So that light is either passing through or getting reflected back off. Is my shirt absorbing green light? Does it look green to you? Yeah, maybe these stripes right here are reflecting green, but the other areas, they're absorbing the green light, right? So it's using that green light. If a plant used every wavelength of light, that got sent to it, what color would leaves be? Black, right? Because it's, it's using all, not sending any back to. If a plant used no wavelengths of light that you sent to it, it would appear what? White. We okay with that? Okay. That's the, what's the major pigment in plants? Chlorophyll. Yeah, chlorophyll is the major pigment in plants. But we have another worker too, who does absorb green. It, yeah, carotenoid. And what do we hear in carotenoid? Carrot. And carrots are what color? So it can't use the orange. It reflects the orange, but it absorbs the other colors. Okay. All right. So then if we look at it in a nutshell, we have our light reactions that occur here on the thylakoid membranes. And we need to start with water because that's our source of electrons. We take water, we break it in half. Yay for us because that gives us what? Oxygen. Okay, so that's the oxygen part. Hydrogen, each hydrogen consists of one proton, one electron, right? We'll send the electrons through the electron transport chain. The protons we'll use to make a concentration gradient, just like we did in cellular respiration, right? We'll use those. They get excited. Once, twice, we get ATP reduced NADP, which we send out to the stroma. And there we do the Calvin cycle, but we need CO2 to help us build our sugars. Then once we've used up, you know, the energy of the ATP and the reduced NADP, we send it back here to the light reaction again. Okay, here is just a close-up of just the light reaction. Okay, here's photosystem two, nana nana, make some ATP. Photosystem one, get excited, reduce some NADP. Okay. And here's another one showing it to you on the thylakoid membrane. So when you have this NADP and this ATP, you can take it out and do your Calvin cycle. And your Calvin cycle is what's going to, um, or what's another name for the Calvin cycle? Dark reaction and another name? Light independent reaction, right? Um, you're going to do this two times. Each time you're going to bring in three independent CO2s and you're going to pull out of it every single time one connected three carbons and that is, what is it called? PGAL or what? G3P. And that's half of a glucose. So we're going to do that every single time. So if we turn it twice, we have two halves of a glucose. Okay with that? And we do the song, we say 3C5, that's RUVP. Then we go plus 3C1, that's carbon dioxide, and we make a 3C6. Super unstable, so it breaks in half. We do that for all three. Power them up, give them ATP, give them reduced NADP. Now we literally have six halves of glucose. But how many do we keep? Just we send the remaining five to get reformed to regenerate our UVP again. And then we have to use some ATP to do that. Okay, and I'm going to sing through those songs with you. Just going to remind you here about photorespiration. Our UVP gets in trouble. And we already talked about it. We avoid it by bringing and doing the dark reaction in by the bundle sheath cells, or we fix our CO2 at night. Okay, and this compares and contrasts the two. All right, um, questions before we sing? I'm looking, okay. You wanna stand up with me while we're singing? Will that help you, say that? Okay, am I in the center? Okay, I'm going to take this off because I'm 10 feet away from all of you. Let's do, uh, uh, let's do aerobic respiration. Um, and then we will do um, photosynthesis.
and then we'll do anaerobic respiration in that order. Okay, you ready? What's the whole thing called? Cellular respiration. What's the first step called? Glycolysis. Who does it? All cells. Where do they do it? In the cytoplasm. What do you start out with? Glucose. How many carbons? Six. What are you going to do? Break it in half. How many steps? Ten. How many enzymes? Ten. What are these called? Two pyruvic acids. And you reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two. Oh, we have plenty of oxygen. What should we do? Aerobic respiration. What's the next step called? Transition prep. Here we go. And you reduce some NAD and two acetyl CoA. Put one away. Am I going to use this one I put away? Yeah, okay, here we go. And two plus four is six. Do the bit, get five. Do the bit, get four. Make an ATP, reduce an FED. Reduce an NAD, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Do the bit, get 5. Do the bit, get 4. Make an ATP, reduce an FAD, reduce an NAD, and stop. Gather all your reduced NADs and FADs and take them to the top of the ETC. Uh uh. Anana, 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 anana. Reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase, and you make some ATP. A lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, or a lot of it, a lot of it. Who catches it at the bottom? Forming water. Water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. We're in photosystem system too. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Anana, 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 anana. PQ. And you make some ATP. Hmm. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Anana, anana, anana. Who catches it? NADP forming reduced NADP. Then you... Take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Mm. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, PJL. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Mm. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. Glucose. Just yes. And you're left with... 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5. Stop, pick up your glucose. How many carbons? Six. What step are we on? Glycolysis, good. <laughs> Six, what are we going to do? Break it in half. How many steps? How many enzymes? What are these called? And you reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two, oh no, we don't have any oxygen. What are we going to do? Fermentation. How many choices do we have? Two. You and I make lactic acid. Makes our muscles sore. Plants and yeast make alcohol. Either way, you oxidize your NAD. Yay! Questions you have for me? Yes. Do we need to know the lab for the final? Yes. 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 No. No additional objectives on your final. How many? None. <laughs> yes. Are we going to have a test on this four, or is that going to be part of our final? Part of your final. <laughs> yes. Everything. Okay. <laughs> All right. Love you, love you, love you.